हेलो एवरीवन अ वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू माय सेल्फ नेहा गुप्ता योर मेंटर फॉर करेंट अफेयर्स सो लेट्स क्विकली बिगिन टुडेज क्लास व्हिच इज गोइंग टू बी रियली इंटरेस्टिंग एज वेल एज वेरी नॉलेजेबल क्लास फॉर ऑल ऑफ यू सो लेट्स बिगिन फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल दिस इज द लाइव शेड्यूल फॉर आर बी एस एबी एन नबार क्लासेस एंड दिस इज आर मोबाइल एप्लीकेशन आई होप ऑल ऑफ यू आर अवेयर अबाउट इट नाउ गाइज फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई वॉन्ट टू डिस्कस अबाउट this comment which i got on one of my videos i guess that was the video of monday okay so this was the comment of monday's uh, video by kusum sharma and first of all i would like to appreciate kusum for providing this information and all those people who take this task to mention their answers or their feedbacks in the comment section below because of this comment now you would be in a position to learn something new right so that is why i always encourage you all to provide comments in the comment section to provide your feedback either or your answers of the questions that i ask okay so very uh, i'm really glad for kusum that she searched the answer she searched for this news because when she searched that she must have learned something about this scheme as well now let's discuss the uh, comment itself so in quarter 3 first of all let me tell you it is about the promotion of bulk drug park scheme okay some days back i hope all of you remember i taught you that at una prime minister narendra modi had laid the foundation stone for a bulk drug park and uh, we are going to establish three bulk drugs park a uh, bulk drug parks first is at una in himachal pradesh second is at the baruch district in gujarat and third one will be established in godavari district in andhra pradesh right i hope you all remember this much and all these three bulk drug parks will be established at a cost of rupees 3000 crores now this 3000 crore is divided into 1000 each okay so 1000 crore is for the una bulk drug park 1000 is for baruch and 1000 is for godavari theek hai this much is clear to all of you now what is the correction the correction is that this entire 3000 crore is given by the central government this is the right thing but this is not the entire cost of setting up the bulk drug park so it is a central sector scheme according to the guideline of this a uh, scheme but actually it is a state sponsored scheme it is a centrally sponsored scheme because here this is 70% of the project cost of setting up the pulp truck park and remaining 30% cost has to be borne by the state government itself okay so himachal pradesh ke liye 90% cost is going to be borne by the central government because it is a hilly state but for andhra pradesh and gujarat which are the larger states for them 70% of the cost which is equivalent to 1000 crore will be borne by the central government and rest of the cost will be borne by the state government for setting up the common infrastructure theek hai common infrastructure which can be used by all the manufacturing units within the park like the testing laboratories etc etc so i hope this much is clear now let's have a look at the guidelines itself so here this is the screenshot from the guideline itself and i have provided you the link of the pdf as well from where i have cited this this is guys the pdf of the guidelines of promotion of bulk drug park scheme released by the central government itself now according to this pdf you can clearly see, uh, see that it is written it is a central sector scheme and central sector schemes are those schemes which are 100% funded by the government central government but here there is a change it has been written like it is the central sector scheme but actually it is not a central sector scheme because i have already taught taught you this fact that 70% of the project cost will be borne by the central government and in case of the northeastern states and hilly states that is himachal pradesh uttarakhand jammu kashmir ladakh the grant will be 90% right so this you need to keep in your mind and i hope we are clear here with the scheme so let's move on to the first question of it but guys i would really really appreciate your comments so do provide your comments do find the mistakes in the video and provide it in the comment section below because our mistakes are provide us the pathway to move ahead to improve okay and i'm more than willing to improve myself so find out the mistakes provide it in the comment section below and if there is the uh, the mistake has happened actually i will take up that mistake 
and discuss with you, okay, like I have done here. So the very first question is about what is India's score in the global multidimensional poverty index? So here guys, option A, 0.069 is the right answer. Uh, 0.069 is not that much a bad score for India. India has actually performed really well on this multidimensional poverty index. So we are going to talk about that as well. But first, let's discuss which organization has released this index. So Global Multidimensional Poverty Index, which is one of the very important indices that you need to cover if you are an aspirant of any competitive examination. So it is released by the UN Development Program and Oxford Poverty and Human Development Initiative. So these two organizations released this index. This year, the title of this index was Unpacking Deprivation Bundles to Reduce multidimensional poverty then uh, we are talking about the multidimensional poverty right but have you ever tried to find it out what is the multidimensional poverty threshold at the world level or what is the poverty line at the world level and at india's level so first let us discuss that so at the world level if anybody earns below then dollar 1.90 per day then that person would be counted as poor so this is the poverty line set up by the world bank and if any person is earning below rupee uh, sorry dollar 1.25 per day then that person would be categorized as living under extreme poverty so it is the extreme poverty line okay and remember, these two poverty lines are set by the World Bank, keeping in mind the price level of 2005. This is the base prices on which these two uh, thresholds have been set by the World Bank. Okay, So this is very important. Now we have discussed what is the poverty line, what is the extreme poverty line. Now what is the multidimensional poverty? Multidimensional poverty you will understand when we will discuss the parameters of this index. Basically we are judging the countries but on what parameters are we judging the countries and the people's status as multidimensional poor or wealthy. Okay, so first let's discuss the parameter. Okay, so first is health. So in case the health services, the nutrition, uh, you can say availability to the people is not there. Okay, so that person would be categorized as multidimensional poor. Okay, this is one dimension. Then we have the child mortality rate. If the child mortality rate is higher in the lower strata of the country, then it means that strata of the society is suffering from multidimensional poverty. So this is second parameter. Then we have the third pillar education. The years of schooling of the children is not uh, up to the mark. Basically, the students have not completed their secondary education. Then years of schooling excess is not there to the population, the poor population. This is the third parameter or third dimension on which we are judging the people's status. Okay. Then we have school attendance. They have enrolled into the school, but they are not going into the school. Then what is the benefit of getting into the schools? That means we are lacking on education. So this is the fourth. Then comes standard of living. Okay. Otherwise, how can we measure a, a person as a multidimensional poor person if he is living a very good uh, life? Okay. The standard of living is very high. So how can we categorize that person as multidimensionally poor? So in order to categorize or identify the multidimensional poor, we need to take into consideration certain factors like cooking fuel. If the availability of cooking fuel is not with the people as it is in case of Indian households, many rural households are still running on fossil fuel. Basically, they are using wood to ignite their, uh, you can say, cook, uh, they are using fossil fuel, they are using woods, they are using various other forest products as the fuel for cooking food. Then we have sanitation services. If that is not there, then that is also a dimension uh, which is making the people poor okay which is making uh, the multi-dimensional poverty index drinking water is not their electricity housing asset if these 
uh, facilities now are not there with the people then we will classify these people as multi-dimensionally poor people okay now let's discuss what this index says about the world and about india how many people are there in the world who are suffering from this multi-dimensional poverty okay so we have 111 countries and across these countries, 1.2 billion people are multidimensional poor, multidimensionally poor. And if we take the global population at 7 billion, then out of the 7 billion, 1.2 billion people are suffering from multidimensional poverty. Okay? So that is, I would say, a very stark fact, but this is the fact. So this is 19.1% of the total population. However, at present, 7, 7 billion is not the total population. It might have increased. But uh, let's take the population at this level only. So 19.1% is the percentage of people who are living in multidimensional poverty across the world. Then half of these people who are living in multidimensional poverty, uh, 593 million, that is 50%, are children who are under the age of 18. So that is another fact. Poorest region is Sub-Saharan Africa. We all know that Africa is the place which remains at the bottom whenever we consider the social indicators or economic indicators as well. So Sub-Saharan Africa, 579 million people are living in extreme, uh, sorry, in multidimensional poverty in the Sub-Saharan Africa. And then we have South Asia where India is also a country. 385 million people live in the multidimensional poverty situation. Okay, so now it's time for us to move towards India's case, to discuss India's case. Now, if we talk about India, then I have a good news and a bad news. Which one will you listen to? Let's start with good news. Karte. So, the good news is that India has been able to pull 415 million people out of poverty. Chika, out of uh, poverty between 2005 to 6 to 19 to 21. Chika? However, the impact of COVID on the uh, poverty reduction has not been taken into consideration in this index. So obviously, the people we have exited, the people we have managed to keep out of the poverty, many of those uh, might have got into the extreme poverty levels again due to the COVID-19 pandemic, various migrant workers, various workers have also lost their jobs. So that will also add up in making them multidimensionally poor. Now, bad news. So the 2019 to 2021 data show that 16.4% of India's population, approximately one fifth, uh, fifth of the India's population is living in Poverty. Now here we are talking about poverty, not extreme, not multidimensional. We are talking about just poverty. And on that note, let me also tell you that India has not defined any below poverty line. Okay, there is no defined poverty line in India. And every kind of social welfare scheme is given on the basis of social and economic caste census. Okay? On that basis and our census of 2011, we have categorized the poor people and we provide the social security scheme. But unfortunately, we were not able to create or define any poverty line. Okay, coming back to the news. An additional 18.7% people is classified as vulnerable to multidimensional poverty. Now here, First, what is this vulnerable to multidimensional poverty? So the, this percentage of people may get into multidimensional poverty. Now again, good news. The score of India is 0 0.069, which is relatively a better score for India because, uh, in comparison to the other countries in South, South Asian region. Bad news is that India is the only country in the South Asia in which poverty is significantly more prevalent among female-headed households than among the male-headed households. So that's the fact and the bad news. Okay, so what good news do we have here? The good news is that the poorest states have reduced the poverty levels fastest, okay? Odisha ka example bhi aap le sakta hai, bhoot tezi se unho ne apni poverty levels ko bhi reduce kiya hai, saati saath social security web have also expanded in uh, Odisha, okay, and many states. 
deprivation uh, okay the poorest state reduced poverty the fastest and deprivations in all indicators fell significantly among poor people so that's a good news the bad news is that the intensity of deprivation in india which is the average deprivation score among people in multidimensional poverty is 42% okay so average deprivation score among people living in multidimensional poverty is your uh, intensity of deprivation okay kitni had tak aap logo ko deprivation uh, you are facing the deprivation as far as the basic amenities are concerned as we discussed in the parameters okay so i hope this much is clear now remember the intensity as well as the poverty of uh, uh, the poverty percentage that this index has set okay the next good news is that the poverty among children fell faster in absolute terms although india still has the highest number of poor children in the world 97 million or 21% of the children aged aged between 0 to 17 in india okay so that is the good news the good news is this much that india uh, has managed to reduce poverty among children bad news is that india has by far the largest number of poor people worldwide which stands at 228.9 million followed by nigeria uh, uh, which stands at 96.7 million in 2020 okay so that's the another bad news now we are going to end up india study of uh, india's case study from the multidimensional poverty index on a good note okay so last we have the good news and that is that india has managed to achieve the sdg 1's target 1.2 okay sdg 1 is low poverty theek hai sustainable development goal 1 talks about reducing the poverty levels by 2030 and in that sdg 1 we have seven targets so among those seven targets 1.2 target has been achieved by india so let me show you so that you can better understand so this is the target which india has achieved now this target says that by 2030 uh, reduce at least by half the proportion of men women and children of all ages living in poverty in all its dimensions according to the national definitions okay so india has managed to pull out 415 million people from poverty okay so india has achieved this 1.2 target now there would be a question in your mind whether you have to remember all these seven targets or not so if you can then you need to pick up the keywords from these seven targets so that you can cite them in your esis because directly the questions are not asked on the sdgs also in your rbi and abad or sebi examination so i don't think that they would ask any question from the targets so clearly you can skip the targets but yes remember 1.2 target was in the news so prepare this target is at least so here is a short comparison between india and its neighbors so india bangladesh pakistan south asia you can clearly see the scores so obviously india has performed better than the south asian average okay apart from this the intensity of deprivation also varies across the countries so you don't have to go into this much depth it is just for your comparison okay so that much is it so we have discussed this now guys since we are talking about the multidimensional poverty index so i am going to take a brief look at the niti aayog's multidimensional poverty index as well because that would act as a revision for all of you because it is the first such index prepared by our own agency secondly it was released in 2021 only so the second edition has not been released now and third fact is that multidimensional poverty index coordination committee was created by the central government to prepare this multidimensional poverty index for india okay and the nodal agency is niti aayog itself so here guys first let's take a look i hope you remember the parameters of multidimensional index of the un now this is the list of the parameters of the multidimensional index of niti aayog so here there are two editions first edition is this antenatal care in the un index we had nutrition and mortality here we have the antenatal care added into the health pillar then we have bank account 
added into the standard of living pillar apart from these two changes all the parameters remain the same okay now this is the outcome so head count ratio this means that 25.01% population the number of people in percentage we are talking about here so these many people are poor in india okay they are multi dimensionally poor and this is the intensity of their poverty 47.13% now if you compile all the parameters and give them the 100% score then 24 25.01% of population is suffering deprivation of 47.13% of the indicators it means that 25.01% uh, of the population is not able to access any of the services or some of the services uh, as mentioned in the parameters i hope you are understanding the meaning of this intensity of the deprivation now when we multiply these two we get the value of the multi dimensional poverty index of niti aayog so value bhi aapko yaad rakhni hai so when it is about our india's uh, index we have 0.118 and as per the un's report it is 0.069 theek hai the multi dimensional poverty index value and the population 25.01% whereas un has stated that approximately 18.7% people are vulnerable whereas 16.4% people are suffering from poverty okay are witnessing poverty so the uh, this much is the difference between our own index and un's index now the question is which data you should rely on and which data you should cite in your examination so guys both the data is an important because one is by the un another one is by our own agency as far as the citing of the data is concerned so the most uh, i would say reliable or the most safer option to cite would be our niti aayog index because that is released by our own agency okay so you can definitely cite this index and you can also use un's index also okay so and here you have been given rural and urban multi dimensional poverty values i hope that uh, this act, this is acting as a revision for all of you now as far as the head count ratio is concerned in terms of state so bihar has 51.91% of its population suffering from multi dimensional poverty then jharkhand 42.16 then uttar pradesh 37.79% so top 3 would suffice okay otherwise you can also remember top 5 टॉप फाइव से ज्यादा नहीं पढ़ना है टॉप फाइव से ज्यादा कभी नहीं पूछते सो मध्य प्रदेश थर्टी सिक्स पॉइंट सिक्स फाइव परसेंट मेघालय थर्टी टू पॉइंट सिक्स सेवन परसेंट सो दिस इज द लेवल ऑफ मल्टी डायमेंशनल पॉवर्टी एंड ऑब्वियसली यू कैन सी द वेरिएशन इन द कलर दिस मीन द इंटेंसिटी ऑफ द डेप्रिवेशन इज रिड्यूसिंग एज वी गो डाउन द रैंकिंग ओके सो द टॉप थ्री टॉप फाइव स्टेट आर दीज एज फार एज दैड काउंट रेशियो इज कंसर्न ओके so here i said intensity i meant to say the population who are facing this multi dimensional poverty because here we are talking about the head count ratio the number of people who are suffering from the multi dimensional poverty or who are witnessing that now the best performers kerala as usual 0.7% uh, is the head count ratio goa 3.76 then we have sikkim 3.82 tamil nadu 4.89 punjab 5.59 and this is the top 5 if we consider the performance that much is it as far as the uts are concerned so dadar and nagar haveli has the uh, highest among the uts had count ratio and puducherry has the lowest 1.72 and in uh, ut category you can remember the highest and lowest only so here we have finished the global multi dimensional index as well as niti aayog's multi dimensional poverty index i hope you have enjoyed it and in case you feel any kind of a uh, discrepancy in the data or if you need to discuss anything with me you can mention it in the comment section below and also if you are not able to understand anything you can mention it also i will try to provide the answer in the comments or if the answer is not possible in the comment section i will take up for, uh, take it up for discussion in the next session okay so the next question is which state has topped in nso's report on value of output from agriculture forestry and fishing sector so here andhra pradesh guys is the right answer first of all let me tell you that this report in itself is a little hazy because uh, it is 
फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल टॉकिंग अबाउट दी ग्लोबल सॉरी ग्रॉस वैल्यू ऑफ आउटपुट ठीक है जी बी ओ ग्रॉस वैल्यू ऑफ आउटपुट ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर प्रोडक्ट्स एंड योर फॉरेस्ट्री प्रोडक्ट्स एग्रीकल्चर एंड योर एलाइड सर्विसेज प्रोडक्ट एंड फिशरीज प्रोडक्ट ठीक है सो ग्रॉस वैल्यू ऑफ आउटपुट मीन्स वॉट इज द वैल्यू वॉट इज द प्राइस ऑफ दीज प्रोडक्ट इन द मार्केट ओके वॉट इज द वैल्यू दैट द फार्मर्स आर गेटिंग सो इफ यू टॉक अबाउट द जी बी ओ देन आंध्र प्रदेश हैज परफॉर्म द बेस्ट फॉर एग्रीकल्चर फॉरेस्ट्री एंड फिशरीज एंड इफ यू टॉक अबाउट ओनली क्रॉप्स देन मध्य प्रदेश हैज गॉट द बेस्ट वैल्यू फॉर इट प्रोड्यूस ओके मध्य प्रदेश हैज टॉप uh in the value of crops agriculture and commercial both both kind, kinds of crops and kerala is the only state which has recorded the negative growth of over 10 percent now remember we are talking about the negative growth that does not mean that kerala has not got anything for its produce okay the growth is negative the amount is not so here what you need to remember you need to remember andhra pradesh which has got the highest prices for its agriculture for its fishery and for its forestry products then the second one we have to remember is madhya pradesh for crops and the third one is kerala which has shown the negative growth this much is in of these three states are important for you to remember from this nso's report now coming to this the gvo was higher than the growth at the national level in as many as 10 states okay including tripura and mizoram and two union territories lakshadweep and daman and diu not a very significant point here the important point is this that all india gross value of output in agriculture and allied sector was 30.6% up at rupees 24 lakh crore approximately because the amount was in points okay so you just need to remember 24 lakh approximately in 2019 to 20 against this much of value in 20000 2011 to 12 okay so this amount is important that you need to remember the amount of the states which is mentioned here okay this amount you can skip okay this amount 2 lakh crore approximately this amount is not that very important the third question is where has sbi set up its first premium dedicated branch for startups so here bangalore is the right answer now if you are an sbi candidate then it is very important for you to know the exact location of this uh, startup branch because it is for the first time that such kind of a branch has been opened by sbi so the branch is koram uh, koramang koramangala okay in Bank. So that's the exact location, and the basic purpose of this branch is to provide the mentorship, technical, and financial support to the startups. Apart from this, the SBI branch has also signed certain MOUs with Karnataka Innovation and Technical Society, Technology Society, and Karnataka Digital Economy Mission. These two organizations of Karnataka have signed MOU with SBI to boost the startup. and here uh on this slide you are seeing the news for which sbi remained in the news so this is for the month of october only. so in the month of october sbi launched its first of its kind next generation contact service center service okay iske through uh, you can access the services of the sbi personnel uh, as far as your grievances are concerned sbi has also marked the threshold of 6 trillion assets under management in the home loan segment okay so sbi has given say, uh, the the book value of the sbi's home loan segment is rupees 6 trillion which is a very uh, i would say very uh, big milestone that sbi has achieved sbi gram seva program which is run by sbi foundation okay for development of the rural areas so this was also there in the news and then we have kishore kumar poludasu who has been appointed as a md and ceo of sbi general insurance so these are the reasons for which sbi was there in the news in october i hope you are now revising these facts okay because if your examination is 
near to you, then these stars are very important. Okay, so question number four is, what is the theme of the international day for the eradication of poverty 2022? So here guys, the theme is dignity for all in practice, the commitment we make together for social justice, peace and the planet. So it's not bada theme yaad rakhne ki zarurat nahi hai because yaad bhi nahi rahega. What you can remember is this. Dignity for all in practice. This much is enough. Now when do we celebrate this day? We celebrate this day on October 17. On October 17, we also celebrate, not celebrate, we observe the World Trauma Day. Okay? Trauma, so guys, everyone has in their lives. Okay? What is important or you can say Tinke Ka Sahara for the people who are suffering from traumas is the self-confidence and the self-love. So if you don't believe in yourself, then you cannot believe in God. So first you need to believe in yourself and this is not something I am saying. This is Swami Vivekananda saying. So listen to him. Start believing in yourself if you have faced any kind of trauma, God forbid. And if you are suffering from inferiority complex or any such thing, depression, anxiety or anything which are very common in today's life. So, trust yourself, try to love yourself. Because, Janam se or Ant tak, hume ki rishta ni bhaate hai, aur wo hai apne saath ka rishta. Agar wo hi rishta humara harmonious nahi hooga, to humari life bhi achhi nahi hooga. Thik hai? Keep that in your mind, ki ek hi rishta hai, joh humara satcha hai, saga hai, joh Ant tak humare saath chale ga. Uske alawa, baaki saare rishta kabhi na kabhi saath chhodi dete hai. On October 17, we also celebrate the International Day for the Eradication of Poverty. We have already discussed that. Now, UN has specified certain decades for action to reduce poverty. First decade for the eradication of poverty was specified in 1997 to 2006. Then there was second decade for eradication of poverty 2008 to 17. Third decade is 2018 to 27. And this one is the most important because this is still ongoing. And uh, you would be wondering why there are three decades. So guys, poverty is a very, very big issue. In order to eliminate that issue from uh, our society, from our world, UN has dedicated three se separate decades for that work only. Okay. Now here again, I have put the SDG 1, no poverty targets, which I had just taught you before uh, in the beginning of the session. And this is guys the last question of the day. So you are happy, now I will not read it further. First listen to it, then we will go back to it. So the question number 5 is, Qatar has been chosen for hosting the 2023 AFC Asia Cup. For how many uh, times has Qatar hosted the AFC Asia Cup prior to 2023? So here it is, uh, uh, the answer is 2. So this would be the third time Qatar is going to host the AFC Asia Cup and remember Qatar would be the first country to host AFC Asia Cup twice. Okay, so that is also important. One more thing that AFC Cup is held in uh, once in four years and the next would be held in 2027 and the hosting bids have been made by India and Saudi Arabia. Now, this fact is not very important for you to memorize. It's just for your information. But do remember the tenure. Char saal mein ek baat Okay, so this is guys the update. So it is the steadfast moon nuclear power exercise, nuclear exercise conducted by the NATO members. Okay. So guys, it has started. Earlier when I taught you about this exercise, I told you that NATO is planning to conduct this exercise. Now NATO has started. So 14 countries of NATO are participating in this exercise. And US, UK and France are the nuclear power countries. Okay, so they are going to be the, uh, I, uh, we can say the leaders of this exercise because they have the nuclear weapons, right? So that is all. One more thing that... When I discussed about this news, I told you that it would be held a uh, thousand kilometers away from the Russian border. But where exactly? So it is being hosted by Belgium. Okay, I hope these many facts are important and you can remember them. On that note, I would like to say a goodbye to all of you. Thank you so much for watching this video.